What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on the $500 Turbo Civic build and we're going to be working on getting the Honda S300 hooked up. Now in order to do that on our car, it's a 99 so it's an OBD2 car, you do need an adapter so that we can step down the wiring harness from OBD2 down to the OBD1 for our Honda as well as having the Honda itself. We chose to go with the S300 V3 with Bluetooth and Boost by Gear because it also has the ability to run a flex fuel sensor. You're also gonna need a intake manifold so that we can run the two wire style idle air control valve. And we also went ahead and picked ourselves up a pigtail for it. So we're gonna go ahead, get the Honda fired up, run to AutoZone, get ourselves an intake manifold gasket. Then we'll pull that thing in here and start getting everything swapped over. So let's get through the intro and jump right into today's video. So we just got back from picking up an intake manifold gasket for this thing. We ended up going with the Felpro MS91485. This gasket comes back to a D16, but as a lot of you guys know, we have a JDM D15B in here, non VTEC sadly. So it should be the same D series intake. So it should all be the same, but we've got to get to work on this thing. We're going to pull the intake box out of our way. We are going to try to use our current fuel rails and injectors just because they look like they're in much better shape than the other ones. So that's the plan. Let's get some tools out and get to work. Now we can start disconnecting vacuum lines, evap lines, all that type of stuff. Always be careful when you undo the fuel line, especially if there's pressure on it. You don't want to get sprayed in the face or catch anything on fire. All right guys, so we're about ready to take the manifold itself off now. It's only seven bolts, so it's not too bad. Go ahead and pop them all off, and then hopefully get this manifold out of here. All right, so before we get ready to put the manifold back in, we're gonna go ahead and get the wiring done for our IAC valve in the engine bay here. So first off, we can go ahead and snip the orange wire. We're not gonna need that one. And we might as well snip this plug right off of here because we're gonna have to wire in a two wire instead of a three wire. You can get rid of that and wire in our two wire plug. You can see the difference here. So we're gonna disregard the three wire plug for our new two wire plug. This one I got online, so it's just generic with a red wire and a black wire. But if you've got one off of a car that came with a two wire IAC valve, like off of a manifold or something you got, it's probably gonna have a green black and a black wire. So in our case, we're gonna take the yellow black wire that is on our car and wire it into our red wire. And then we're gonna take our black blue wire and wire it into this black wire. So let's go ahead and get that done. If you guys have the other harness, like I said, your yellow black is gonna go to green black and your black wire is gonna go to a blue black. So let's go ahead and get this thing wired up. All right, you got that all wired in. Now we can go ahead and grab the manifold and start setting it on. We're finally getting ready to put our manifold back on. So we've got our gasket here. We're gonna slap this on first. And then we'll go ahead and grab the intake manifold and start putting that on. I went ahead and brake cleaned both surfaces to give us our best chance 
at sealing up here, especially because we're going to be putting boost to this thing here real soon. All right, let's go ahead and grab our manifold. Now we can start putting everything else back together. We got the manifold tightened down. I'm putting the fuel return line on to the regulator. So we got most of this buttoned up. We did have to go ahead and customize our throttle cable bracket. This is the one off the old manifold. If you guys are doing this, get one with your manifold. We had to take the bend out of it, create our own bend up higher, and then drill a couple new holes. But as you can see now, it fits up just like it should. And we've got it pretty well straight. So we're going to go ahead and throw the bolts in that. And then I think we're going to try to fire this thing up before we swap the ECU over. So we got this thing pretty well buttoned up up here. We haven't messed around with the computer at all or put the Honda hat on it yet. But we just want to make sure that it's going to crank over and see if it tries to fire. Not sure what's going to happen. But we already primed the fuel system. We don't see any fuel leaks. So we're going to go ahead and hit the key and see if it fires. seen we got this thing to fire up with the stock ECU it actually sounded pretty cool sounded like it had a big cam in it or something but it did fire up so we should be done out here in the engine bay we got the manifold switched over and everything plumbed how it needs to go so now we can finally move on to the inside of the car and start working on getting the Honda S300 installed so now that we're in the car we can start removing this panel for those of you that don't know the ECU is behind the passenger side kick panel right here so we're gonna go ahead and start pulling the clips and pins out to get at it. So now that we got that kick panel out of the way, we have access to our ECU. There's a couple 10 millimeter bolts holding it in. So we're gonna go ahead and pop those out and we will start working on the wiring. Now mine might be a little bit different than your guys's because mine has that JDM D15B in here, non VTEC for whatever reason he swapped that in. And I'm not sure what they had to do wiring wise to get everything to work. So I'll show you guys how to do it as if it's a factory engine in the car. We're going to start taking the plugs out. I use a little mini flathead screwdriver pop the pin and then I pry up on it so it comes out like so as you can see the guy before me here has these little things in here not sure what he's jumpering I'm going to try to find a wiring diagram for this thing and see what he was doing there because I don't like leaving that but for now we might just leave it and see what we have what we're working with but I hate to see those and he's got a couple bare wires up here not sure what those are for yet so might have to dig into this thing a little further later but like I said, for now, we're just going to pretend like it's not there and do it as if it was just stock. So this is our stock ECU we just pulled out. 
So this is the plug that we're gonna be messing with. This is the B plug. And what we need to do is remove this orange wire, which is in slot B15. And we also need to take out the blue with black stripe that's in B6 and move that one down to B23. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with B15, the orange wire, to make sure that I have my pin tool set up correctly. We'll get that one pulled out and then we'll start working on getting the blue and black down to B23. So we got everything repinned. Sorry, I didn't show much of it. The camera died on us, but you just have to switch those pins around that I showed you. So now we are ready to plug in our Honda. We've got our jumper harness hooked up and we can just go ahead and simply plug this guy in. All right, so we've got this all plugged in. Now we can go ahead, grab the laptop and plug into it. So as you can see, we've got the Honda all hooked up, cable plugged in. Now we're gonna go ahead and hop on the laptop. You are gonna have to download Honda. Once you have Honda installed, obviously go ahead and open it up. This is basically what it's gonna look like when you first download it. We just went ahead and threw a generic um, backdrop on here, if you will, with our display and par parameters. We don't have a calibration on here, so we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a new calibration up in the top left. And we're gonna pick from one of these pre-populated maps from Honda, the basically base maps that'll allow you to get, get the car running, get the car going. Um, depending on your setup, you are going to have to play with some of the parameters and just overall map values to get it, you know, more defined to your setup to make it run properly. But you're going to want to start here with whatever ECU you're using or whatever model the car is. We're using a D15B engine, so we're going to stick with that. Click that up arrow. So that's how you load a tune. And then if you hit the lightning bolt, that's how you connect. Unclick it. And now just click your up arrow again because you changed it. So it's basically ready to go? Correct. Um, the only other thing I would say to do is go to the TPS tab. And you're going to go down to where the two read sections are. It's minimum reading. Oh, there we go. Yep. Click uh, read on that right now. Okay, and now if you want to get in the car, I'll do the upper one, but you're just going to floor it. All right, ready? Yep. Let off. Floor it again. Okay, good. Should be good to go. We just synced our throttle. Now we're ready to give this thing a try. I have no tack again. And I have a check engine light. So as you guys seen, our first startup did not exactly go as planned. The Honda was working properly, the computer was picking everything up, but our gauge cluster was not seeing the RPM signal, so we had no tack on the dash. And it wouldn't really be a big deal because I can use the Honda app for a gauge, but we put that gauge cluster in so that I would have a tack, so I wanted it to work. But we did a bunch of running around and trying to figure out what the issue was. We tried a few different things that didn't work and then we finally got it figured out. So after running some part numbers and going back and forth, we thought maybe this distributor needed to be changed because we are using a jumper harness from OBD2 to OBD1 so that we can run the Honda. data. But after looking up some part numbers, we found out that the distributor was the same. So we started taking it apart, looking around, seeing if we could find maybe a lead that was disconnected that we could use for RPM signal. And this is what we found. So if you guys look in here, you can see this white wire right here that we have ran over to it. We went through the little grommet there and then down into the distributor. Now, not sure if you guys can see that one over here on the end but that's where we had to tap in for the RPM signal right here. That one was completely blank. All these were already hooked up, but that one was empty when we took this cap off. So we decided to try to put a connector on it, run a wire to it, and run it through the firewall with our reverse wires that we did in the five speed swap video. And then we ran it all the way to our gauge cluster up here to the blue connector. 
with the blue wire right there. You can see I've got it spliced. I believe it was number eight pin, but double check me on that. It was the RPM signal wire that it would use for the OBD2. And we ran that into it with our white wire from the distributor, and now it's working. So I'll show you guys here in a minute. I think we're ready to finally fire this thing up, let it warm up, and go take it for a ride and see how it does. So there's one more thing that I wanted to mention before we take this thing for a ride. If you're using the same intake manifold as we are, you're gonna have a second valve on the throttle body itself. As you guys know, we are wired into the idle air control valve on the intake manifold itself, but there is this secondary valve on the throttle body. Our factory manifold had the same thing, but we cut the pigtail going to it so that we could wire into the two wire idle air control valve. I just assumed that this valve would be naturally or normally closed, but it's not. We had a vacuum leak and a high idle issue going on that we just couldn't seem to get rid of, even in the tuning. And we even thought that we had a intake manifold gasket leak, but after a while, I was like, you know what? Let me just try to cover this port up. And after I did, all of our issues went away. Like I said, I just assumed it would be normally closed, but it's normally open. So what we did was we went ahead and just took some Gorilla Tape for now, and I wrapped it over the opening of the port right here, sealed it off, and our high idle is gone. I made the piece long so that when we put our screen boot cover for now on here, it uh, holds the bottom of the Gorilla Tape so it can't get sucked in. So we're gonna go ahead and use our other spare throttle body and I'll TIG weld something up and plug that off or just get a block off plate. But I just wanted to go ahead and mention that to you guys so that if you were having a weird high idle issue, you could give that a check. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and take it for a ride. So as you can see, we finally were able to take this thing out for a ride. We've got our high idle issue fixed and our RPM signal taken care of. So now we have RPM at the dash, which is super cool. Glad that we got that stuff figured out. Sadly, we can't really beat on this thing too much right now because we've just got a base file in it from the Honda data bank. Uh, we just kind of threw it in there and got it to idle decent and went with it for now. But make sure to stay tuned because in the next video, we will have this thing on the dyno and see what we can make. We're not shooting for much, but if we can make 85 horsepower and 85 foot-pounds of torque, I will be super happy with that. The turbo parts are starting to roll in as well. So once all those parts get here, we can start putting the turbo on this thing, get it back on the dyno again, and see what this little thing can make. And then of course, take it out and have some fun with it. So as always, I appreciate you guys for checking out the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. And I made a TikTok and we have an Instagram page, Bought to Build Official. So make sure to check it out and we will catch you on the next one.